Good morning, welcome everyone back to my channel. And today I'm going to finish the last cluster in the final corner of my Jennifer Colston sampler. Now, hello if you're new. I went to a class of Jennifer's. Um, Jennifer Colston has three fantastic books which have really elevated my skills somewhat. Um, this would be my favourite. And it is all about embroidery and these ones are more projects. Um, what I love about Jennifer's work is it's making me stop and change my threads. It's making me stop and change my style all within one branch. And I think it makes my work more interesting. So the more you look, the more you see. I guess I was thinking more like nature and if that was the flower head, it'd be there, 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 there and there. Where Jennifer s stops you and change to something else, change the, the leaf, change the stalk construction. So I, I was lucky enough, well, I twigged that Jennifer was a Queensland girl and she was um, doing classes at a quilt shop, Kim's uh, Sewing Centre, um, on the Sunshine Coast. So I managed to get myself in for two classes and I did them back to back because it's a bit of a drive for me. And I've got another two classes booked and then that's probably all I'll have time for being that I'm coming into my busy time of my uh, year. So, but it certainly has shot me forward, I think, skill level. I hope you guys can see the difference too in what I'm doing. So in the class, we just focused on the greenery. So Jennifer drew for me an outline and showed me some stitches. So the class on this corner in particular was just that and the little twig and that. So I've since come along and added some ribbons. So this is my homework. Jennifer said to me, go forth and stitch and um, play with what you've learnt in this little zone and then start playing with flowers and see where you go. And she listed probably three or four off. And I was like, yes, I've done those. I know them. I did learn a little rose, this little squishy rose, um, but I knew some of the others. So I thought, yep, I've got confidence enough to go forth. So I'm embellishing what I started with her. And then when I go back to the class, um, we will be filling in with some other things. I'm not sure. It'll pretty much all start connecting like this one is here. I've started putting a heap of little French knots around the end of this. And I was looking at it thinking, oh, that's exactly what we're going to be doing. We're going to be starting to fill in with random little flowery things on sticks and twigs and, and it'll just become one big mass. So you're probably wondering what all this is over here. So Corinne has been playing a little bit, but anyway, we'll get to that. So what have I done so far? I, I didn't have any of this green left that I used on the day. I've used it all. So I just got my next most favorite color and um, started stitching a twig up here which I didn't mind because it sort of gave it a different tone. Then let me zoom in. Then I was sitting there and I had this, my standard. So I started placing a second little petal in amongst the twigs of that. And then when I picked up some ribbon, I then put little petals in that. So there's actually three little leaves going into the stick that I created and the stick is a combination of uh, fly stitches and just V stitches and a big stitch that I've pulled sideways. They're all in her books. She does different variations on variations of variations. So I know a lot of you have started collecting the books, this one in particular, because it was mentioned with Rachel and Sarah when we all kicked off on the Roxy uh, Creations Stitchery Project. So we, that's when I saw it and was like, oh, this, this could be a good thing. But even if you've got um, old um, embroidery books, dig them out, have a look. Because the principles are the same. The only thing different is the Jennifer factor, which is mixing it up. Really, really playing. So that's where I'm at. 
Now, then I was like, well, what colours am I going to do? I've sort of done a pink thing here and an autumn thing there and a, another pinkish thing there. So I thought I might stay with some whites because this sort of happened. So then I started playing with these little French knots in a little cluster. There they are there. So I've yet to put in a centre um, knot. So pretty standard stuff. Um, just before I started filming, I started doing little clusters of French knots here. See, I can't even get off the front cover. There is seriously that much inspiration just here that it's, yeah. I think one day I was doing something on another project and I went in here thinking, righto, everyone, let's, let's go for it. And I got as far as the second page in and everything I did that day just came from here. I suspect Jennifer will have me do this type of stitching next in all of the gaps. So this piece is just going to evolve and yeah, become a, a really great sampler as such. Now, a couple of you asked what size this was if you wanted to have a go. I've used a piece of felt that is from um, Sue Spargo. I'd never seen this felt before and it was at the shop for sale. And um, I thought, well, another opportunity to have a little play. Let me just bring the camera up a little bit um, and measure it. So it was a pre-cut piece. I'm not sure if it came from Sue Spargo like that or the shop buys it by the meter and just cut some pieces off, possibly. So it's about 13 and a half inches by 17 and a half inches. So if you wanted to create your own exploring sampler, that's the size I'm working on. So yeah, have a, a search for Sue Spargo felt. Now this is a piece of uh, iron-on um, uh, well, interfacing, but it's really soft. So I'm a bit of a fan of um, putting a backing on all my pieces as well. I just like a little bit of thickness. So I tend to put something, even if it's calico or some um, wadding that you would put in quilts. I've got a bit of wool wadding left over from my quilting day. So I tend to put something behind it. This has a sticky little bubbly spot on it, which was supposed to adhere, but it just didn't. So it's a bit wriggly, but that's okay. It's rustic. Now, what was I going to also, before we get into it, um, the boundary, the border. I've been thinking about adding, that one is not going to sit like that. I've been thinking about adding a border to it. And I think I should make my mind up about it now before I go back to the class because otherwise if I want to sneak in here with a piece of lace for example like this has been rolling around on my desk I thought if, I, if I'm going to build in a little bit I need to get it stitched on before I go back to my class. So that's what I'm thinking. And when you go through um, Jennifer's books, she does some beautiful work where she brings in a lot of textures from random pieces. Let me bring that up to the camera. Why is my camera around the wrong way? That would explain. Oh no, it's, it's doing the right thing. Uh, just a bit. I think I bumped it. See how she brings in different um, textures and bits and pieces and then embroiders. I'm so going to explore this in the future because it's right up my alley. And I've got bits from France from my trip that I want to play with. She makes bags out of them. Oh, there's just not enough hours in the day to do what I'd like to do. So I'm thinking of bringing some lace into this. Maybe not too much into there, but definitely around the boundary. So I just started piecing down some bits and pieces. So I thought I'll pin it and then spend the week looking at it. 
and then before I get to the class, I really need to camphor stitch it down like boros out, boros stitch it all down. And then I'll be closing in the work, so to speak. So that's my plan for the boundary. I think that'll look really cool. Anyway, I will endeavor to get back to this corner. Degree of difficulty is high because I've now added pins to everything. So that's pretty straightforward, just little knots. And I'm thinking I'm going to sort of do another cluster maybe in here, in here, and just work my way down a little bit and then come up with something else down the rest of the, down the rest of the, the area. Um, up here is where I've finished off. And I thought, gee, if I don't turn this camera on, I'm going to be scooting ahead. This, this camera is, why have I got a, I'm concerned that I've got the camera around the wrong way. I might just pause the video, guys, because for some reason, yeah, I have. My iPad's in upside down. My camera's over here at the top corner where I usually like it here because I'm right-handed. So I'm just going to pause the video, turn my iPad around, and I'll feel like I'm not overreaching and going to give myself a bit of back pain. Won't be a moment, guys. Okay, I'm back. Yeah, I had my iPad in the wrong way. Gee, I was so excited to get in here. I had put it in the wrong way. Um, okay, so what I'm thinking of doing on this one is just some little bullion knots now some of them i've put together some of them i've just done singly as i'm working my way down down the little branch i'm sort of getting a little bit sparser with it to sort of make it look softer now i won't go all the way because i think that's enough of a little thing happening there we'll take a leaf out of jennifer's book and just change it up a little bit. So I'll end my thread off, or can I think of something else to go down here? No, I can't think of anything. I think I might actually explore ribbon next with you guys because I grabbed, why have I got a problem there? I grabbed out a little little sample of ribbon on a card and it's sort of the scraps from probably a previous project there's a knot in there so it's best I do finish this off because I have a knot well this is a good start to the whole show isn't it you'll be sitting there going that's typical typical embroidery I don't edit my videos because I just don't have time so what you see is what you get. And it's all the same struggles. We're all having. <laughs> We're having. Oh boy. Sometimes you can pick up your needlework and it just flows and you have such a great experience. And the next day you'll pick up something and your needle keeps becoming unthreaded. You get knots in things and you're like, why do I do this? This is not enjoyable. So let's see how we go. Oh, before I go too far, see how I put a couple out here by themselves? There's no stem connecting them. That's because when I was starting to do the little white buds, I felt like I needed them out there. But when I did the stem, I didn't go out there. One thing Jennifer stressed to me is open my work up. And you can see as I've progressed, my work's got more open. You can tell, like, this is really good. There's air here. This one, not so much. That was the first one. This one really got tight. But I think it's because this branch bent in. I sort of hemmed myself in. But I don't mind it because it's full. And then I just did some loose-ish things in here. So it didn't feel too full. But it's very intense in there. Ow, there's a pin. Seriously? I knew pinning those bits of fabric around the side was fraught with danger. 
<laughs> I need to get them stitched down so I can get rid of the pins because I'm sitting on the couch and this is being hugged by myself. Now I've got a bleeder. <laughs> oh my goodness. Today's one of those days. This is this is going to be a circus. Oh, goodness me. I've got a possum problem too. Well, it's solved now, but I woke up fairly early and I could hear a ruckus out where the pooches are. Now, they're in a, um, a little fenced off area that's reduced in size compared to our backyard so that at night they're undercover, their beds are in there, but they can sort of wander out to a little area to go to the toilet, but it's, it's sort of reducing our backyard. That's the wrong coloured thread. I can't do that, or can I? Can I drift a few little, yeah, okay. Break the rules, doesn't matter. So yeah, doggies are safe because Peppa tends to like go hunting for frogs through the night when she was a pup. So we just installed this smaller zone to keep them safe, well, keep the frogs safe. And, um, so it's just become habit. They go in there for their dinner, they have their breakfast in there, and then out they come for the day of frolicking. Well, we've got possums down the back because we've got some big trees and I installed a possum box um, when we first built the house and moved in. So we've always had a possum around and every so often mama possum has a baby and she's just been gorgeous. So there's a ruckus and I look out the door and the dogs are looking up in the air. It's like the corner of the house and then we've fenced it off to create this rectangle. So they're nestled in the corner of the house. In this corner is a downpipe and sitting on top of the downpipe and their fencing comes to that downpipe is a possum up on the pipe which sort of kinks to go up into the guttering to meet the guttering and I'm thinking what is this and they'd just woken up and realized it was there so this possum's got in and got itself up on the downpipe through the evening and even the dogs didn't even realize that Mrs. Possum had moved into their zone so and I'd planned on lying in and I I knew the girls would have a video up soon and I'm not sure what day of the week you guys are watching this but it's Thursday morning for me and the girls video would have been ready to watch. So I'm thinking oh get out of bed and it's a bit cool and I um, wake my husband and he's he'd been up all night he hadn't gone to bed you know real early so he was like oh please another hour or two and I'm like nope there's a possum out of bed so he's lying in bed I'm out and he says I'll oh, get the pool cleaner you know those big poles with the net on the end and maybe a bit of a tap on the butt and she'll move on so <laughs> the dogs are put in the front yard because I did not need their assistance um, and I get the big long pole and we're talking a pole that's probably, I don't know, 20 foot. It's huge with this broom on there. So I'm trying to navigate around obstacles, trees, bushes, <laughs> fencing to get in there with this thing. And I'm thinking, this is ridiculous. So I give Possum a tap on the bottom. Possum looks at me if to say, oh, I'm not going anywhere. And um, it just didn't didn't move why would it i think this is a stupid idea so in i go to my husband who's still in bed thinking he's getting another hour or two and um let me just set myself up with some thread here i'm going to use these ribbons did i mention i'm gonna stay with all creamy tones and i've got this little card of ribbon that is that's nearly a soft bluey cream then this one and a white so that's the plan I'm going to use these through this until they run out and that'll give me an excuse to go shopping again did I say that out aloud or was that just a thought no I think I said it out aloud so anyway back to the possum 
the <laughs> the picture me <laughs> standing there with my slippers on and my dressing gown and <laughs> this extremely long. I really need to iron that. Oh, I'm so prepared. I'm not going to iron it. I want to talk about my possum and I'm going to break rules that I learned in the Jennifer class already. Hopeless. So possums clinging to the side of this downpipe saying, I'm not moving. Why would I move? You look scary with your big stick. So it, it lasted all of us 30 seconds. I was like, this is stupid. So I, I then did pick up a broom. I had a soft end broom. Um, shorter handle, easy to manoeuvre, and I use it to sweep out that area if there's leaf matter and, you know, fur and stuff like that. So I, I go walking towards Possum, who's looking at me with his huge black eyes, and I'm thinking, you are just the most spectacular thing. So I've got the broom, and I like tapping him on the bottom, and he's like, he's not moving. He's He's got himself in a position where he's actually quite secure. He's not coming out. Anyway, um, oh, I tell you, the the possum wasn't moving and I'm looking at these beautiful, big, big black eyes and I'm thinking, what if I accidentally shove the broom head into, into her eyes? I'm going to say her because we found out it was a lady possum. And I thought, this is ridiculous. This is just dangerous. She, her eyes are so open. And even as the broom came close to her face, she didn't seem to blink. So her instinct, like humans, if you point to someone's eye, they tend to blink to protect themselves. She didn't. And I thought, oh, I don't want to hurt her eyes. So anyway, I gave up, went inside, woke my husband again and said, get out of bed. I'm getting a possum catcher. We need a professional. And he's like, oh, I don't know. It'll move on. I'm like, no, it's not. The dogs are in the front yard. I planted some plants yesterday. They are now running through that garden bed, ruining, you know, $100 worth of plants. So get out of bed because the dogs need to come back to the backyard where they can frolic and play and get on with their day. So anyway, he's moaning and groaning. And I said, I'm ringing a possum guy. So I Googled it, found someone who was local. By this time, it's like 7.30 in the morning. And I noticed that he had 24 hours on his advertisement. So I think, what, well, you're waking up, mate, whether you're awake or not. So he answers and I get this, hello. So he was asleep. So I'm on the other phone going, oh, I've got a possum. Are you close? Yes. Can you come out? Yes. I said, he's easy because he's just on a downpipe. You get you a small ladder and you've got hold of him. So her, uh, anyway, long story short is my husband's next comment was, how much does that cost? It was $200 to have possum man come. But, you know, at the end of the day, I'm just freaking the possum out by... Um, shoving a broom in its face or on its butt so it had to be done and um i said to my husband so the dogs are in the front yard the possum man's coming the dogs need to go to the backyard to get the possum man into the house and then the dog's back into the front i'm giving you the really fast version i've fast forwarded myself dogs back into the front yard to get the possum man into the backyard <laughs> to get possum so half an hour husband's out of bed possum man's arrived and he's a lovely fellow and he walks around to the, the rear of the house and spots possum and he brings out this fantastic contraption. It's like a little short stick with a, uh, a noose on the end. So as it goes over possum's head, he just pulls it tight. Possum comes away from the wall straight into a possum box. And we said, well, possum lives down the back in amongst the trees. There's actually a possum box there, we think. She has been in there over the years because we've seen her coming and going occasionally. And um, he took her to the tree directly below. And, of course, she shot straight up that tree. She didn't go into the box, but she went as high as she could, like, do you blame her? She's had me with a broom and a pool cleaning apparatus poking at her. But no possums were hurt in the making of this video. <laughs>
and possum is now safely up the tree. So it was good because we discovered her and within the hour she was safe and out of there. So my pair of doggies now are back in the backyard and they're just sitting at the bottom of that downpipe still thinking the possums there which they're goosies they're not the sharpest tools in the shed it would seem so possum has been returned to the bush so there's my possum adventure it's just hilarious years ago we had a baby end up around the house and in a hedge and the dog at the time it wasn't these pair I think Pepper was a baby it was my first Australian Shepherd uh, Bentley and they were going round around this shrub it was a, like a hibiscus shrub and very very interested in you know something and but when I came out I saw that it was a little baby possum removed them from the scene and it took off it straight away ran towards the rear of the block and escaped but I think this one was a little bit too what am I going to do through here I think this one was a little bit too close to the house and it somehow got a bit disorientated and even if I'd got it off that pole there was nowhere really for it to go easily it could have ended up heading towards the side boundary and then be in the front yard with the dogs. And it was just a circus waiting to happen. As I said to my husband, we need a professional. This can go pear-shaped so easily. And all we're doing is stressing this poor little creature. So I just did two little stitches there and I don't know where to go next with it. I sort of think this should be quite fine through here. So I might just leave it at that. Come over here. Maybe here and here. So I'm going to end this off. I probably have just enough to get a couple more stitches. So there's my possum story. I'll put a photo at the end of the video that I took and sent to the chap to let him know just, you know, what type of job it was. And next to the downpipe is a big round black plastic thing and it's connected to my uh, cooktop. So as cooking um, smoke or fumes or whatever comes out of my cooking zone in the house it's piped to that point and then released outside so you will see a big black plastic domey thing bandit just went past the window they're still looking for possum but he's up a tree he's outsmarted those two hounds so yeah you'll see You'll see a black domey thing and you'll see probably the dog mesh. It's like temporary fencing we installed so that we could remove it. Um, you know, if we ever sold the property, we can remove it, but it at least keeps the pups, well, the frogs safe. So he, I'd say he's come around the side of the house and instead of, instead of going right, which would take him back to the bush, he's gone left which has brought him into this L shape of the house. He's then walked straight towards the temporary fencing that we use to keep the dogs in a smaller part of our yard, nestled into the house. And then he's gone up that mesh, got to the top, realised he had a problem probably. I don't know if possums realise these things. But um, he's then gone up the mesh up the downpipe and has sat there. The doggies woke on sunrise, obviously smelt him straight away, like, aren't dogs amazing? And then they're like, whoa, we got we got an, a visitor in our pen. I can I actually saw the moment that Pepper got out of bed and went, Pen, <laughs> there's a possum in here. And I thought, what are they looking at? My first feeling was it was a carpet snake. Having bush is all well and good, but 
Every so often these lovely animals get a little wayward and come into our world, don't they? So to my relief, when I hopped out of bed and pulled the curtain back to see to that point, I realised it was a possum. Thank goodness. So my day wasn't going to be wrangling a snake. So let me have a look at this thread next. It's like a soft lemony tone. So what I might do... So that's my excitement. $200 possum rescue adventure. Before I'd even had a shower. Oh, I tell you. And here's to top it off. Fudge. He has been to the vet. Now, two days ago, I noticed that Fudge was a bit lazy, not coming for breakfast, sleeping a lot, not even then coming in of an evening to sit on our lap. There was no meow meow pacing, get out of the couch, I want to eat. Just something different. So we were sort of on, he was on our radar. And we'd planned to go away on the weekend. And I said to my husband, I said, nah, something's wrong. I think, I think fudge is a bit off. So the evening, last evening, no, day before last, I went out to his little box in the garage. He's got a little heated blanket and, you know, Fudgy gets what Fudgy wants. I looked at him and I thought, your chin looks big. When he was a kitten, he got bitten by a bumblebee on his chin. And he came into me. I was actually sitting there on the sewing machine and he jumped up on my lap. It was smooching and smooching and I just happened to glance at him and his chin looked like it had a very large a marble shape on the end of it. I was like, oh my goodness, what's happened? And then I noticed there was a stinger from a bee still in his chin. So I pulled out the stinger and um, within the hour or so it just subsided. Well, his chin looks similar, not as pronounced as that, but it didn't look right. And I noticed during the day, every time he woke from a nap, and he was napping a lot. He was very dribbly around the sides of his mouth, like the plumbing wasn't right. So his lips weren't closing properly. And then I thought, okay, due to some swelling, Fudge's lips are a little bit of out of alignment and he's dribbling. So then I see the lump and I said to Gaz, I said, mate, we're, we're going to have to go to the vet in the morning. Something's not right. He must have a abscess or something on a tooth. Now, he's 17, so the boy's getting old and his teeth are a little dodgy. They're hanging in there, but he's had a bit of dental surgery in his time because he gets the odd tooth that just, you know, it's not good. So off to the vet we go. I ring him dead on 8 o'clock. I'm coming down. And they says, we don't have any bookings. And I said, I'll leave him at, with you. You can have him all day. No rush. Just take the cat. There's something wrong. So they said, yep, bring him down. So I dropped him off. I had a quick look at him and they suspected that, yeah, it was an abscess. So the long story short is he spent the day in there. They had, um, they took his blood work because he has got really thin in the last six months. And now we were told on his last vet check a year ago when he had some dental cleaning and a bit of maintenance, the vet said, oh, he's got three pointers that we use that tell us if a cat is getting kidney disease. Two are elevated, the third isn't. So we believe he is going to be early kidney disease and one day it will probably take him out. So we've always thought loss of weight meant, uh-oh, Fudgy's getting kidney disease. Hence why we always thought too that fudge would be the first to go because Casper always looks so healthy and fat. Hence, that didn't happen, did it? But anyway, I'm getting sidetracked. Fudgy is in there. Um, they can't pinpoint. I'm going to put a bullion knot on the top of this lazy daisy just to give it that tight little end. This is something different. 
um, they can't see where the abscess is. They put a needle in, draw it out, and sure enough, there's that yucky stuff that, you know, blood and stuff to say that there was. So, yes, they also do his blood work because we had a chat, you know, the chat. He's 17. And the vet said if he has kidney disease because, yes, gee, he does look thin. Um, in, and we go and do a heap of surgery in around his gum. He's not going to heal because his kidneys aren't doing the right thing. If they're in final stages of failure. So we had the chat. If Fudgy's overall health is not good. Oh, my goodness. Then a big surgery to sort out this, we suspect, abscess was not a good idea. So anyway, I left Fudgy and got home and I told Gaz. I said, oh, here we go. We could be about to lose our, our second cat. When it rains, it pours, I tell you. So I then had to have some dental work like it was the day of the dentist let me tell you I had a couple fillings that needed to be redone because I'd been eating popcorn and cracked a couple fillings hubby was having a clean so he was getting off lightly but I had an hour of dental work so it was just going to be a great day for everyone so I'm in the dentist chair and I can hear my phone ringing in the reception and my husband had gone in before me. So we were half expecting a call to say, you know, what was the plan for fudge? So I'm in the dental chair thinking, oh my goodness, this is it. Fudgy's gone. We're not going to be bringing him home. Oh, you know, feeling pretty, pretty ordinary, to be honest. And... Um, the call comes through, Fudgy's blood work is perfect. There is nothing internally wrong with that cat. Where we thought he was getting thin due to old age, diabetes, there could have been a heap of things. He's getting thin because he's just an old man. And then when she had a closer look at him, she said he's actually not malnourished. He's just a, a fine little fellow. And there's actually, he's got perfect blood. So the plan was to put him on a drip because he had got dehydrated due to the shape of his mouth changing due to this little abscess, which didn't seem to be connected to the tooth or the jaw. It was just a bump on the end of his chin. So we really don't know if it is a tooth or it's maybe he got a, a prick of something on his chin and he's got a little infection and it's puffed up. So he spent the day at the vet. He was put on a drip. He was picked up at five o'clock. And the vet said he is in awesome condition. There's nothing wrong with that cat internally. So the plan is now just to watch him. He's on some pain relief, some antibiotics. The bump has gone down to the point where it's just disappeared. So his plumbing's good. He's no longer dribbling. And um, he had a good night's sleep. So pussy's looking heaps better. And he came home from the vet very alert. So we're just going to, we cancelled our trip away um, for the weekend. And thought, oh, well, we'll just hang around and see, you know, what's happening with the boy. So this morning, after I dealt with the possum, Fudgy seems really good. He's very alert. He ate the evening he come home from the vet. He's had, he's back to three little pouches a day. Um, the vet recommended we add maybe some kitten food every other day just to boost the calories. But other than that, he's doing really, really well. So luckily, the fudge is back. He is bouncing back. So $900 later for a day at the vet, a, a, um, a, what do they call it? The drip to rehydrating. And <clears throat> he will be booked in next week for some dental surgery and he'll get a clean and she'll have a bit of a look around, do an x-ray. And if there is a tooth that has an abscess that is 
you know, is just sitting there. She'll uh, deal with that. So a bit of maintenance off to the dentist for the fudge. I'm sure that'll be a $2,000 exercise. Not that I'm bagging vets because, you know, we need our vets. We do a good job looking after our babies. But boy, oh boy. It's funny, I, I go to the dentist and my dentist bill was half the cat's bill. How does that work? Anyway, let's not get into the political statements of healthcare in our countries. <sighs> so there you go. That's the latest. Fudgy has a toothache, maybe. Could be a bumblebee, but I don't think it is. I think it's a little abscess on the tooth. Oh, that's crooked. Let's just get that. That's better. But we are onto it. He's as fit as a Mallee bull. That's a bit of a saying here in this country. Here we thought he was terminal and would probably not make the next six months. He's fine. It's just unbelievable, that cat. I wish I had a little bit more white ribbon. But I am thinking, you know, hit repeat. Don't. Don't, Corinne, let's, let's just make it random. I don't need that white ribbon. Just use what you've got, which will make it random. So that's the excitement. That's enough excitement. So my weekend away, we were going up to check on the house that we're building. We're getting very close to the final walkthrough with the builder and handover, so... I was looking forward to going up and having a few days away and check the house out, but Fudgy Boy's not well, so it can wait. The builder doesn't really want us there yet anyway. He's still getting things done. So it was just a bit of a social, let's go away for the weekend. So that means I can stitch. Instead of packing, stitching into the car, I can uh, do a few more things, which is great. So it's coming together. I've got another combination there that I might put a big butt in. So that guy is a lazy daisy with a, a bullion stitch on the end, which is in her book. And once again, it's a classic example of how you can combine your stitches to create interesting features. You can do a, a pistol stitch at the end too. It's another nice nice way to make your this um where was it? There's a pistol stitch at the top of a lazy daisy. Bullion knots at the top of the lazy daisy. It's very cool. Okay, that's pretty good. I'm not a fan of this over here. I think I need to make it softer. So I think I might get a fine thread and do some little pistol stitches over there, I think. I still have a bit of ribbon left, but I'm going to just put it aside and have a look at doing something over there that's going to soften it. Um, we need I might use this grey because I know it'll is it I think it's too dark. I did use this one, which is 415, over here, and it looked really good. So I might do a little bit of that. So let's get ourselves a bit of cotton. Going to use just the one 
thread because we want it fine. So let's just pull one out. And we'll do some little wispy, wispy things coming out. So do we do them as a cluster or spread it apart? Could probably make them reasonably big. We've got room. Might get a bit tight in there. So we won't go too big. But we'll make them a decent. Sort of looking a bit like a what do they call the wheat an ear of wheat we'll just do three you can always come back with another stitch or two and maybe add a bead so these are like little fibers or here's an idea or the the white petal gets the next treatment so this is just like a little fiber that's between each of the petals so purely just to soften the overall and then we do something off of the the white part and maybe that has a bead on it i'm thinking or a pistol stitch instead of a bead. Beads are good, but you know the girl likes beads. So I think the girl will need to go looking for beads. I have some really white beads. Maybe. So I'm just putting some little tufty tufty fine little strokes of thread in there if you want to paint with thread we'll call it a a stroke like that so just a little little something sort of reminds me of lavender she's got a lavender in that book there's white lavender, isn't there? Isn't there? I don't know. I'm sure there's a lavender. Yeah. Oh, okay. So that's with French knots and then the two little strokes. No, that's not going to work. All right. So let's maybe use something a bit bulkier. Let's go back to that cream, which I've used over here. So that sort of brings brings that could even do no we want to thin it down I don't want to get any thicker we'll just work on this one otherwise I'll spend too much time so what are we doing if we go to the top of the petal or the white and do keep it quite fine. So we'll only do two wraps. We'll do a pistol stitch out from the top. This is a weird looking plant, this one. She said to play. Be brave, she said, and go and play. Oh, I like the curve. That curved because I pulled it so tight. One, two. Put another one in. Oh my goodness, seriously. Oh, I think I'm due for a parcel, so I bet they can hear. I bet they can hear the van, the mail, the courier van. 
I'll just do another one. I'm pulling them quite tight and it's giving a nice curved shape. They're going to come running back through. Oh, I'm so sorry. You guys are trying to do needlework and you can hear my hounds. Here they come. They're going to run back past. <clears throat> Stop it. Now they're looking at me. Yeah, there must be a, a career. If not here, it's the neighbours. Okay, so we've got these random little pistol stitches with a French knot on top. We might leave it that. If I did heaps of them down, down the actual plant, I think it would look heavy again. I even think I should stop at that, you know. If I do one more, I'm looking very uniformed. And that's just so me, but we're not doing that. We're, we're changing it. <clears throat> now I wonder... <clears throat> Here they come again. Goodness sakes. Bandit. Please. We're filming. Can you have a little respect for everyone listening to me? They don't want to listen to you. He's looking at me in the window like a dill. Now I'm wondering. I could put through the center. Yeah, let's do this. A heap of the little French knots so they're like yet to shoot out from the plant is the theory you like how I can justify the stitch yeah I like that gosh where's the time gone I think I did about 11 minutes or so before I realized my camera was upside down on my iPad Oh, this is a wacky little plant. I could even put some beads through there too. But that might make it bulky and we're trying to make it less bulky. We're trying to make it look finer. Mind you, there will be some big, big daisies and things that I presume she'll have me make. So, there's so much ribbon there. I'm struggling to get my needle through okay I think that's going to work and I like how it's just put that little little hint of interest down through the center of the petals but I won't go too far with it Oh, yeah. I love it. I don't know if you can see the detail. See that the camera where I've got those little knots through the centre. Mm. Okay. I might leave it at that. I think you get the general gist of where I'm heading with this particular branch. It's going to be a flush of creams and white flowers. So I will probably keep playing with these. If I need any greenery, it's going to be the white. It's going to be the cream. We might just grab out the beads. I'd like to use some white beads that I'm pretty sure I've got and I've never used. And they might just be the thing. See those? They're really, really white and I've never used them. Or we could go down the line of some crystals. Hmm. Well, I'll put them in. There's, there's, hmm. No. Okay, don't pull out 20 things, girl. Just 
keep it simple. <clears throat> I know I haven't explored beaded flowers. And I noticed in this book, when you're getting into that whole crazy quilting, she's got examples where she's used beads to create flowers. And I haven't done, there's, there's an example, little white beads in a circle. So instead of knots, they're the little white beads to create the flower. There they are there, little pearls. So I haven't really played with that. So there's a, a branch, Y stitch, and she's threaded beads on as she's done her Y stitch. So I might even mention to her when I get to the class, take my beads with and get her to show me some tricks with beads. Because I'm a bit of a bead fan. Like, look at that flower there. That's pretty cool. A beaded daisy. Hmm. Anyway, gosh, there's so many things I could do. So I've got my, whoops, my little container so that I can go move to the next room. And I will be back at the end to show you the finished, um, the finished corner which is going to be a flush of whites and neutrals and yeah love it okay guys and I might actually start stitching this down that's that's a definite I'm going to use just a neutral thread like I usually do maybe I should be braver but I bet I won't and just start stitching these pieces down okay awesome lovely all right, guys, I'll leave you alone and I'll be back in a few seconds after I've finished this and then I'm ready for my class. Excellent. Thanks, guys. Bye. Hello, everyone. I'm back. So a full day has passed and throughout the whole day, I just picked it up, did a little bit more, picked it up. I really tried to keep in my mind to keep it light and soft and uh, airy. Uh, didn't change the colours to what I discussed earlier this morning using the creams and whites. I was happy with the way these two buds came together. I sort of feel like that they're okay, even though they are quite dense and heavily uh, embroidered. I sort of don't mind it. it, creates a little bit of an interesting focal point. And I think little elements like that will probably appear everywhere in around. I'd say that's where she's going to take me next. But um, yeah, so I did the little baby's breath look through here. I didn't do anything down here because I sort of felt like, I don't know, that, that was pretty and I just didn't want to mess with it. The one going through the centre, that was probably my biggest challenge because so much happened here, a lot happened here. I just kept meandering around this area so when it came to do this, I sort of felt like I'd nearly hemmed myself in. So I kept it very, very soft. So the little um, bullion knots here, they were what you saw, I believe, a few minutes ago. I then added some lazy daisies in between the, v st uh, the fly stitches with an elongated end to them. That sort of took up that space. Then through here, I did some of these little fly stitch leaves, which was a very small version of that guy. Um, this little branch coming off, lazy daisy with a pistol stitch at the end using ribbon. And then some just some little lazy daisy leaves in there. So I kept it quite light, even though I used ribbon. So that was a lot of fun. Some squishy roses, just like I did over in the pink, where I... Uh, brought the ribbon up and wove it zigzagging like and then straight back down, scrunching it all back in. The difference is this is three millimetres and this was the wider ribbon, which I think seven mil. Oh, don't quote me on that. But now I've got at least the two different sizes. So as a bit of a reference, I can go, okay, a little flower versus slightly bigger flower, even bigger flower. But mind you, that wasn't a squishy rose. That was working around a uh, spider web, you know, the five spokes. Um, in this zone here, I just meandered. I put some little white beads in there. 
I had some leftover ribbons, so I did some uh, French knots. No, they're colonial knots. They might have been French knots, but only two wraps. Lazy Daisy with the bullion on the end. I think they were in the, the video prior, uh, you know, a few seconds ago. So that's nothing new. It was just a case of the little beads, um, some more little leaves where I needed it. I put a French knot in the centre of my little flowers here of the ribbon. And it was the leftover ribbon that I'd used just next door on that. Um, there's some little twiggy things here. I just put a little bead on them. You see how you just break down a tiny little area. Then you do another little area. Then you do another little area. I think I finally got my head around the style that Jennifer um, has in her books. And I think that's handy if you're going to have a go at crazy um, quilting, crazy patchwork. You're only dealing with a short area. So you can explore different stitches, little layers of things, and then bulkier things with finer things. Like it's, yeah, it's quite interesting. But um, as I said, if you can get your hands on any one of these books, it is value very much so even this one I haven't spent a lot of time in it um, I've been really focused on this and due to Susanna's prompt um, crazy patchwork I was sort of delving into this but last night I started looking through this one and I'm thinking well that's you know layers upon layers of stitches like look just look at that for a start there you get the shine out of that you can see the squishy rows, then the bullion knots, top and bottom. The chain of um, ribbon in the green. Then out comes these little fly stitch. Does she call it fly? B. Yes. Yep, fly stitch, colonial knots, fly stitch again, bullion knots, ruched rows. That's my favourite rows. And feather stitch. Just in that. It's just just beautiful i think i said in the videos i did with the prompts of susanna's uh crazy quilting that i probably wouldn't go back there but you know i would never do a quilt like that's years of work but this now gives me the confidence that if i wanted to do a project with a small version of it on there i probably would consider it which has sort of got me thinking a little bit I've got um, a couple ideas floating around in my my head. So I'm not sure when this little lot of videos will fall in my schedule. But I, yeah, I think I'm going to. Let me zoom back up, guys. I'm going to play with this more. I'm surprised at how little room I actually have left. It's quite, quite amazing just how loose I have got. Let me go up a little bit more and you can really see it. It, um, yeah, I can see how I've evolved. It's quite interesting. It would be very simple to add on to some of these. Very simple. And before I would know it, I'd be filling it up. Now the border, I I'm, I'm do like it. I really do. I think I'm going to proceed with stitching that down. Definitely what I've placed so far. So that's going to be my next um, little thing. Um, I'm finishing this video off uh, this evening. It's, you know, four o'clock or something. The sun's starting to set. And I think tonight after dinner, I'm just going to run some stitches through this and get it down. Whether I finish the border before my class, but at least... Uh, yeah, I at least want to start building something because that will show Jennifer that I've got some lace drifting into here and we need not worry about that. So that just sort of leaves this little portion through the center. So that's my thoughts on the border. I'm 99% I'm sure I'm going to proceed with that. So there you go. I'm ready to present my homework to Jennifer. It far exceeded what I thought I'd end up doing. At one point it was like, oh, you know, I think some of the ladies in the, one of the classes said, oh, she gives us homework all the time, but we've never done it in the four years we've been going here. So it was so a comment like that. So don't feel like you need to do your homework. So I sort of did leave going, well, if I get it done, I get it done. 
and I have got it done. So I'm, I'm pretty pleased actually, because you know, you go all that way for a class, you want to at least learn something and build on your skills. So, but I must say the books, the books, the books, um, they are good, really good. Anyway, that's enough from me. I need to go and get some dinner sorted. And um, then after dinner, I'm going to do a little bit more stitching. At least I don't have to think too much. This is old school. This is just me meandering along stitching. So that'll be a pleasure. All right, guys, look after yourselves and I will see you all in the next video. Bye.